Hi everybody, welcome to Scorch Kitchen. Hi everybody, welcome to Scorch Kitchen. I hope you're fine, I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a lovely day. Um, getting on with it. So, the video I'm about to do, it's about just preparing different types of foods. So today I had a challenge of preparing most of what is on my menu. And that is why I have um, written on the Facebook description uh, as, as to why I'm doing this video. It's like, let's cook the menu. That's what I'm doing. So I'm trying to prepare different types of food because that's what my customer wants. And that's what I'm going to do. So I said, let me come really quick and show you guys a few of the foods. Let's just do this and see how far we can go before the phones say no. I wanted to do um, a live at the same time on YouTube. That's my next challenge. So I give myself challenges. And my previous challenge was to be able to do two lives at the same time on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm currently doing that, which is really, really amazing. Thank you everybody for following me. Thank you for encouraging me to continue doing this. I am glad you're even here today joining me. So I'm already, I've already seasoned my chicken. I'm already grilling some chicken uh, in the oven because we normally do the African grilled chicken. So I'm grilling the chicken and also the chicken wings are already grilling in the oven. My chicken that is supposed to be stewed is on the side there i've just marinated it i'll just show you guys really quick so because i'm doing a lot of different uh, foods in like different small portions i have uh, so i have here as you can see so that is uh, garlic and uh, ginger fresh garlic and ginger i normally blend it together put it on like those ice cube things and then just uh, freeze it and you use it as a cook so i've just seasoned that a few hours ago i'm just letting it so that it can continue seasoning so that is for the chicken and then i've prepared some beans as well i have some chapatis and then i have some um mandazi also to prepare and then i have pilau rice and jollof rice to prepare yeah so that's what's going to happen today so right here with me i want to show you guys how i prepare my beef i have uh, remember i'm doing like small quantities of everything okay so i'm just going to go ahead and start and show you guys how i do my beef and um in kenya we call it wet fry you can call it anything you want so i already cut my beef in small pieces as you can see here and then i have my garlic and ginger that is going to go in a pan i'm going to add a little bit of water on there so that it can actually start cooking slowly I'm gonna turn up my hob so that that can actually start cooking i am using a wok because uh, I find it um, much easier when I'm cooking um, like this wet fry. I like chucking it in a wok and that's why I'm using a wok. I hope you're able to actually see that. It is just a basic wok. Actually, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to move it there on the other part of the hob so they can cook there so that you guys can be able to see me doing other things because this is not the only thing that I'm going to prepare today. So I'm going to turn the heat down here and then leave the other one to actually cook then i'm going to move this here so that you can be able to see so with the beef what i'm going to use i'm going to use some tomato chili sauce this is available on our website uh, scotch kitchen um african scotch kitchen.com i've actually put the link uh on my on this live video on the facebook and for instagram the link of my website is on my bio so you can just click it. This is five pounds. It's only available in Europe. Yes, in Europe only currently, but hopefully we're going to be able to disperse it everywhere else. So I'm going to use some of the motomoto sauce. And then I got this because um, back in Kenya, our tomato paste is normally put in like a tin like this. So recently I went to an African shop. If you're in Naniton, there's an African shop in Naniton and you can find different types of African foods there. So recently I went to that African shop and I was able to buy this. This is tomato paste. So I'm going to use some of this tomato paste. By the way, that African shop has a lot of stuff. It has this. I also bought, I also bought um, this, which I'll have to try and prepare before I actually introduce it. Look, 
fufu flour. This is made of plantain. And then this is a fufu mix, cocoa So this is also going to be coming to Scotch Kitchen very soon. I'm going to try and practice it myself, yeah? Because uh, fufu is mainly West uh, African uh, type of dish. In East Africa, where I come from, we mainly have uh, ugali. Down in South Africa, they call it pap. And uh, up here, they always, they have it, they call it different names, but it is almost exactly the same. Same to the way they're calling this fufu, we, I'm sure, if I ask my mom or if I ask her, somebody who's way, way older than me, they can be able to tell me exactly how they call um, that type of, uh, of staple food. So that is also going to be coming to Scotch Kitchen very school soon. I'm going to try and practice it myself first. Eat it a bit, ask a few people to eat it as well. Then after getting a few um, response to that, that's when I'm going to introduce it to our menu. So back to our beef, that's what we are preparing today. So I'm using scotch tomato sauce. I am using tomato paste. I am using tomato puree. I am using a fresh tomato, an onion, and then I'm using chili, yeah? I'm using chili if you if you have wet fry you will realize or you will know wet fry has to have uh, some chili going on it because it always have to it always has to have that kick in it that kick is always good for flavoring basically it helps you enjoy the food more so if you don't like chili and you want some beef or you want me to make you some wet fry just let me know and I'm not going to put any chili for you I am just going to mute that chili part. The spice of choice today, I am using warm spicy. Again, warm spicy is available on our website, which is africanscotchkitchen.com. You can be able to find this, yeah? That's the spice of choice I'm using. Yes, you can see it here. I tend to have uh, my spices in a whole, like, different level so instead of me just sprinkling there i make it i can use it the way i want but again if you want a taste of it you can actually order a tub okay so that is what i'm using today warm spice then as you've seen i've used a little bit of fresh garlic and fresh ginger if you don't have fresh garlic or french fresh ginger our website again we have that we have a powdered garlic and we have also ground ginger you can order that from us so not to worry for you to be able to actually make this specific um specific recipe so my beef is actually cooking beef here doesn't take too long to cook it actually cooks uh, really really quick back at home when we used to prepare beef or we prepare beef you tend to let it cook for a very long time so that it can actually be really nice and soft you can get some meat and risers some people use meat and risers some people use uh, pressure cookers to actually prepare their meat to make sure that their meat are really nice and soft personally i don't do that when i'm just preparing my beef i put it in the hob a little bit of water let the water bubble up and then we're going to start doing like this fry frying it it is called wet fry because you don't put any water in it you just let it cook with its juices yeah i'm just making sure that this is not hot to burn my my thing let me put something there so that i can be able to use that So that i can be able to use this surface for you guys to be able to say so what i'm going to go ahead i am just going to go straight and cut my onion so i have a whole onion here i am going to have the onion and then i'm just going to chop it in slices basically as i always cook i tell you it doesn't matter how you chop your onions as long as they actually cook so as you can see here i'm going for strips today I am going for strips today so that's the best way to do it if you feel it's much easier for you just be very careful when you're using a knife you need to concentrate because you don't want to chop your fingers okay so we go ahead and chop our onions this is such a simple it's the simplest recipe you can actually go for for 
a wet fry you can have it with either rice you can have it with couscous you can have it with ugali you can have it with fufu which soon we're going to be learning how to prepare so that we can actually have it with that as well so that's my lovely chunk of onions let me just get my other piece of onion where you're going to come back here and then i'm using one one uh tub of tomato or one tomato basically definitely don't forget to remove the seed of the tomato like that's the top part just cut that off because you don't need that part do that exactly the same to the other parts as well and then you want you just need a really nice and ripe tomato the main reason why i like using different types of tomatoes is because tomatoes different type tomatoes have different taste buds yeah some of them you will fill them at the top at the top of your tongue some of them you're going to fill them deep in down your tongue and some of them you're going to fill them on the side of your tongue yes your tongue has um, a way of tasting different types of things or texture yeah so the last thing i'm going to chop is the chili i am using three three chilies that's what i'm using i'm using this three green chilies and uh they they are actually mild they're not that hot but again it is your choice you can either use um this just one of it or none of it completely as you can see i am giving it like really nice big chunks of it because i want it i want when somebody's actually eating it you should be able to bite on the on the chili and again i'm not using so much chili because we're going to be using some melted multi chili sauce on there yeah so that is done i am going to put that on the side my meat here has already started browning as you can see it's already started browning and that's the what we want i'm going to drain off that water so don't worry about it at all i'm just going to leave that to cook for another minute or so and it is going to be good to go so when our meat is cooking i'm going to let you know what else i'm going to cook i'm cooking a few things i've written them down so i'm going to be taking as i go when the meat is uh, still cooking, another thing that I'm going to prepare is kidney beans, yeah? Kidney beans. This is kidney beans. So, that's my kidney beans and that's my onion. onion. So, that is uh, our vegetarian meal, basically. So, I'm going to prepare that. Kidney beans, I'm using coconut milk with it. And uh, normally, if uh, it is like a bigger occasion, I tend to cook it the day before so that the coconut cream can actually marinate inside the beans and it actually gives you a really, really amazing taste, yeah? So that is also what I'm going to prepare. Then I have prepared my two flowers ready there for my mandazi and my chapati. And I'm going to do that as well in a bit. So I think that's enough. Uh, talk so what I'm going to do now I am just going to go ahead and drain this water because I don't need the water but again if you need to use this water because it is really good broth you can actually use it um, you can it's actually good broth that you can use to prepare rice you can use it uh, to prepare some gravy you can use it to prepare some stew so if you know that you're going to continue cooking, you can just drain it on a bowl or something and then you can use it again. Yes, currently I am not going, I don't need it, so I'm not going to use it at all. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the food on my bigger hob because now I want you guys to see what I am doing. So as you can see there, remember I put in the garlic and ginger there and a little bit of salt so that is all we have here and what you need <clears throat> before you put any oil or anything you just want this to actually cook you want it to cook until it looks as if it's going to start burning yeah i'm going to show you guys how it looks you can hear that um simmering which is really a good sign as you can see there just keep on turning that up yeah you want it to look to start as if it's almost like bunny but it's not really bunny because the whole of uh, the idea of wet fry it's almost as if it's charred yeah it's not bad it's almost as if it's charred because that is the effect you're actually looking at that's the effect you're actually um looking at so i'm leaving it for a few minutes as i'm talking because i want it 
to get to that part, the effect that I've just told you guys about, yeah? As you can see that. Yeah, I know many people have never seen me preparing beef in Scotch Kitchen because um, beef is not really that... Um, I'm not famous, it's not really wanted as much as chicken. People prefer eating white meat, which is like chicken rather than red meat. Um, beef. So, as you can see, I'm starting to smoke away, which is good. So now is when you're going to go ahead and add a, bit, a little bit of oil. So today I'm just going to use olive oil. Because olive oil takes a bit of time to burn. Yeah? Be generous with your olive oil. As you can see, I was really nice and generous. Turn your heat down a little bit. And make sure the oil goes all over that mix. Yeah? I hope you're able to see that. I'm just moving away because it is uh, actually flashing back on my face. And I don't want anything on my face. Yeah, we have to maintain this beautiful face. So, after that, I'm going to go straight with my onions. Throw those onions there. The more onions, the better. The more onions, the better. Yeah, so there you go again. Mix that up. And all you can see is onions. Let me just move you guys a little bit there so that you can be able to see that properly because uh, that's perfect. I hope you're able to see when I... Ah, perfect. Um, let's move Instagram people a little bit. No, that way. Yeah, that way. Ah, oh, amazing. Okay, and there you go. That's much better. Yeah, so... Keep on mixing this up. You want your onions to actually cook so that they can be a little bit soft. That's the effect you're going for. You're not going for the, you know, when you're cooking your pilau and then you want your onions to completely turn like really nice and golden brown. No, we're not going for that effect here. Yeah? Keep on mixing that baby up. And then, immediately after that, you go in with your spice. So you need, I've, I've actually put almost like a table, a half, I can say one and a half teaspoon. Yeah, one and a half teaspoon of warm spicy. Yeah, warm spicy on our website, africanscotchkitchen.com. That's what we have here. Mix that up. And you will realize when you actually put your spice, it actually starts becoming really dry. Yeah? Which that is what spices do. Spices absorb, they, they absorb all the lovely other watery nutrients that are there. Yeah? So now, the next thing I'm going to go in, I'm going to go with my tomatoes. Yeah? So I'm going to go with my fresh tomatoes first. Mix that baby up. Mix it up completely. Gonna reduce my heat a little bit. And as you can see, it started having that lovely coloring that we actually want. Immediately after that, I am going to go in with my tomato paste. I'm just going with a spoon, uh, a, a teaspoon of that. And I am going to go with a little, also a teaspoon of that. And at the same time, I'm going to go with my motomoto. And I'm going to go with a teaspoon of my motomoto as well. Yeah? Remember, we've not added our chili yet. Not added our chili onto this yet. Yeah? And as you can see, it started looking really nice and amazing. That's the effect that we want, yeah? So, the joys of this, I can cover this up 
and then it is going to moist up and that that moisture that is going to form is what I can have like my sauce or remember about my broth that I told you about I am going to add just a little bit of that in there because my tomato paste is really nice and thick yeah and there you go you can see we are having some moisture and uh, jubilation going inside there yeah so this is when also if you have some coriander you can throw them in there this time if you have some bell peppers you can throw them in there i tend to when i'm doing this wet fry and because i'm going to it's going to be they're going to have it with some ugali i don't put any bell peppers i just leave it the way it is because I want the tomatoes to actually give the actual taste because bell peppers they also have a taste that they actually give the food so now the next step I am going to reduce that heat completely yeah I know you're wondering what time are we putting our chili we're going to put on our chili just bear with me one second and I am going to cover this baby for a few minutes. Yeah, so I'm going to cover this baby for a few minutes, and then that is when I am going to chuck my pesto. I have some pesto here, and I am going to put in my chilies. After that, a minute or so, it's done. Yeah, because remember, you already um, pre cooked this meat. So you, the whole idea of this part of cooking, you just want it to actually get all the other spices, the, the tomato, the other flavors to actually go in the meat. That's all you're doing. You're not cooking it again so that it can be really nice and tender or that you've already done that, yes? And then after that, nice and easy, you can eat this with your garlic, you can eat it with your rice, whatever the case, and just enjoy it peacefully yeah so i think it is time i think it is time for us to remove that off and there you go look at that yeah it's a little bit wet and it is fried yeah so that is the effect that we were going for so Last but not least, I am going to go with my chili. Remember I told you guys about this hole? Did you see? I've just used that hole. That is what it is for. Many of us think it is for holding it. But where are you holding that to? Yeah? So, mix your chili on your wet fry. And ladies and gentlemen, our wet fry is ready. I'm going to bring you guys closer. Let's start with you guys in Facebook. Because I'm more compliant with this. As you can see, that is our wet fry. Looks really nice and amazing, right? You guys can go back. And then we get the Insta guys. And uh, there you go. There is our wet fry. Yeah. You can see all our chilies there. They're ready to go. Okay. Let me put you guys back. Oopsie daisy. I need to invest in a stand. We're getting there. One at a time. Yeah. One at a time. We'll get there. First of all, we need to learn how to use whatever we have first then we can go to the next level yeah so my wet fry is done and ready to go I'm gonna put this on the side and then we go to the next thing it is done guys that's it that is how to prepare a quick wet fry yes so if you're around here and you're on scotch kitchen and you want to try a wet fry you know what to do always just go to a website our last orders for the weekend are on friday before 6 p.m you can just go ahead make that order 
and we're going to sort you out but again i normally tend to try and tell people to try and call me by wednesday if i'm not having any event i'll be able to advise you yes you can or no you can't otherwise i've tried to put all our schedule online for you guys to be able to see when i'm available and when i'm not available yeah so that is wet fry that's done so the next the next thing just bear with me one second guys we're going to do the next one we are preparing is going to be our beans yeah we're going to do our kidney beans let me get something and put below there just to avoid a lot of cleaning there you go so the next thing i am actually preparing is our kidney beans yeah i'll prepare the kidney beans and then we can look at our grilled chicken really really quick it's so easy to prepare kidney beans because we are actually doing a coconut creamed kidney beans all we need is our onion garlic and ginger turn the hob on yeah you 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 can actually turn the hob on after you've cut your onions but i'm going to cut my onions at the same time turning on the hob because i'm just going to do this really really quick yeah so you need your onions garlic and ginger you can use your spice of choice you can use uh ba -ba -ba spicy, up, spicy up yeah you can use spicy up i'm going to show you guys that for a second there i forgot i was live and i just went straight yeah you can use spicy up so my onions are going to go straight in there this is the most the easiest one to actually prepare i love this because you can actually have this for your breakfast with your mandazi you can have this for your dinner as i'm preparing it now you can actually have this as um as maybe a midday snack or something of that sort it just depends with you as a person really yeah if you're a foodie like me it doesn't matter you will be able to eat it anytime you want the oil of choice i'm using vegetable oil today and i'm going to go straight with some nice blob of vegetable oil and so all we have here is garlic and ginger and onions that's all we have here garlic ginger vegetable oil and onions that's all we have here so we're going to let our onions cook i'm going to bring the cover for that it's going to let about if you realize the heat is really nice and high that's how we want it let your onions cook while your onions are cooking spicy up okay the spice of choice is spiky spicy up spicy up spicy up that's the one Again, you can find our spices on our website. If you're on Facebook, the link is there just on this live video. Directs you, to, uh, takes you straight to our website. If you're on Instagram, on, on my bio, you should be able to find a link to our website. And you should be able to see all the spices that we are currently doing. I am trying to update that website because we have extra spices that we've recently introduced. And I really need to put them up there. I am going to do that. Yeah, one day at a time, right? One day at a time. Okay, so mix the baby up Woo. there you can see there you can see so you need that to to be really nice and soft remember we don't want it to be as dark as when you are actually preparing you don't want that to be as dark as when you are actually preparing what pillow yes so now i am going to go in with my salt And I'm going to go in with my 
spicy ah that's the spice of choice yeah so you need half a teaspoon of that that's about how many grams of um, Beans. About 500 grams? No, is that 500 grams really? Um, no, it's not fair. It's, eight, uh, it's 800 grams. 800 grams of kidney beans. That's what I'm actually using. Facebook has actually moved. Stay like that. Yeah. Lean on, lean on each other. Yeah? So you have here, you have spicy up, you have garlic and ginger, and you have red onions and vegetable oil is what we are using. When your onions and your spices are blended together like that, you can see that. When they're blended together like that, what you need is your kidney beans. So take your kidney beans and they go inside there. Make sure you wash your kidney beans, drain them off, all the waters whatsoever and then they go in mix your kidney beans together Woo. mix your kidney beans together with the spices that are there i'll show you guys how it looks in a second So like the source of protein for those who vegans or vegetarians as you can see there it looks really nice and amazing yeah as you can see I've not added any water yet then I have a tin of coconut milk here that's what I'm going to use you can use any coconut cream any coconut milk you have you can get you can just go ahead and use that I'm using a whole tin of that that's about 500 ml about 500 ml gone in there and now this is what we have we have like a big nice juicy when you're preparing your kidney beans and you are actually um preparing this recipe don't add any water we need a little bit of salt don't add any water because your coconut milk is what is going to be the water if you're using coconut cream if you're using coconut cream what you can do is add boil a little bit of water add that onto your coconut cream and make a really nice thick paste and then that is what you need to add in your beans because what you're trying to do you're trying to make sure that the beans are actually absorbing the coconut cream or coconut milk that goes in there it just tastes okay I'm gonna cover this up our meals are so easy to prepare so I'm going to move this baby onto that hob I'm just preparing that hob because I've just seen a little bit of a darker flame coming out of there I don't like that okay that's okay so that is done so I'm going to just move it on this other hob pardon me pardon me so that it can actually cook that's done kidney beans cooking wet fry is already done so we're going to go to the next thing let me just wipe my surface really really quick yeah so our next thing i am going to show you guys how i prepare i'm gonna prepare my mandazi dough i'm going to prepare my mandazi dough and then I'm going to prepare my chapati dough. Then when my chapati dough is actually doing its thing, we can actually start preparing mandazis. That's how it happens in the kitchen, yeah? You just have to be a little bit wise. I can't clean this one yet because I'll have to move that. So I'll clean it in a second. So... 
let's do this baby so we're going to prepare before we do lots of preparation let's check on our on our foods let's check on this oh. so here you can see that I need to drain I need to drain the water off face yeah I need to drain off the water yes I have one of these ones I was just feeling a little bit lazy to go ahead and use it so just bear with me one second guys let's drain that off okay so I've drained a little bit of that off and this is what we have. So we have our grilled chicken and then we have our motamoto wings. The wings, I'm going to let them grill there for a period of time. And then I'm going to show you guys how I actually add my motamoto chili sauce on them. Then I'm going to chuck them back in there. Yeah? Remember, we got our oven. It's actually working, yeah? It's working perfectly. I'm so proud of me. I'm proud of me because I fixed it. Yes, it wasn't that it wasn't that difficult. It was a little bit it was a little bit challenging for somebody who's never done that before, but we got there, yes. We got there because I had to exchange my oven because uh, my previous oven was uh, the grilled part grilling part was um having issues it kept on triggering my main uh, my main switch and made, made me a little bit worried. So fixing it was more expensive than just buying a new one so i just went ahead and bought a new one then when i bought a new one i asked them if they can come and fix it for me and the guy just advised me and said you can be able to fix it and he explained to me what i was supposed to do on the phone and when it came i actually did it definitely i had to get help from tyler because tony is not here anymore so I had to get help from uh, Tyler to remove the old one and put the, the new one. We had to d do the plugging and the, some electrician things, just making sure that everything is okay. So I plugged it and then I plugged it on the wall and then we fixed it back. It wasn't that technical, but I was really worried because of the wiring part. But what I did, I just looked at the old one how the wiring was done and that's exactly what i did and so far one week down and it's actually working it's not gone off in me my electric have not uh, done anything everything is just perfect so that means i did a good job so well done to me okay so now let's prepare our mandazi dough what do i use to prepare my mandazi dough self-raising flour, sugar, mixed spices. Oh, Scotch, why didn't you remove them quickly? Give me one second, guys. I remove my mixed spices. I need cumin as well. Oh, come on. So I normally use my mixed spices. So I'm going to use some mixed spices to do my mandazi. And what I tend to do when I am doing this i add my mixed spices together with cumin and i also add some cardamom yeah cumin and cardamom with cumin cumin I add some cumin as well yeah and i'm going to add some sugar yeah that is cumin we do cumin as well yes cumin is not yet on the website yet but it is going to be on the website very soon all the spices that i do before i actually uh package them like that i have to try and use them myself to make sure they're actually worth it before i actually roll it out to you guys so most of my spices are like i have like loads of big things like this where i grind them and i use them and i use them and i use them and make sure that they're actually suitable for you 
before I actually do it. So this is how our cumin is going to look like. It's going to be in the website very soon because I need to actually package it, yeah? So the next thing, I need some sugar. I need some sugar. So what I tend to use, I take sugar. You need to measure your sugar. I was taught to cook by my grandmother. I use my eyes, yeah? So you get your sugar. Are you able to see this? Let's move this there. That's better. There you go. Um, unfortunately, that's working a little bit better. Okay. So I'm going to see here. And I'm saving my sugar. This is what happens when you hear, you know those lovely mandazis that I prepare? This is what I do. So I put some sugar and I'm using the sieve. I'm going to show you guys why I use the sieve in a second. Because sugar sometimes forms uh, like bubbles, especially if uh, you're using a wet spoon on there. Yeah? I don't take sugar. I buy sugar because of you guys. Because you guys need mandazis and the mandazi need a bit of sugar. Yeah? When I'm preparing for the boys, sometimes they use honey. They can't tell the difference yet. But with you guys, I have to do the original recipe. The original recipe is not honey. The original recipe is sugar. With the boys, I put in um, yogurt in there, natural yogurt or Greek yogurt. I don't do that with you guys because that, again, is not the original recipe for Mendazi. Yeah? So as you can see here, you can see those bubbles or uh, balls of sugar that are there so we have our sugar here we have our mixed spices goes in there so you can see that mix that together mix spices and sugar mix that together and then the next thing I have I am going to get my plain flour and water it is that simple and the water I'm getting lukewarm water you, you just need lukewarm water. You don't need hot water for mandazi. For mandazi, you just need lukewarm water. You don't need hot water, my lovelies, for mandazi. Yeah, for chapati, it depends with you. You can actually have hot water, or again, you can have lukewarm water. So here's my self raising. And again, these beautiful eyes know how much I need, yeah? So, mix all your dry ingredients together. I'm going to top up a little bit of that flour again in a second. I'm just turning down my beans. So mix that baby together. For you to know that this mixture is actually on point is when you are touching your your flour you can feel the granules of the sugar yeah because the sugar granules don't use caster sugar you can use caster sugar if you want to but i tend to think if you use caster sugar you tend to use too much sugar if you use the normal sugar with the with a bit of granules you should be able to feel the granules on your flour to know that that is spotted. The next, what I tend to do, I put in a hole in the middle of um, of my flour, so it's almost, pardon me, like volcano, and then I go straight with my water, add a little bit of water, and then you just start mixing. Yes, I, I tend to use my hands. If you have a mixer, you can go ahead and use a mixer. But as you can see, I'm not making a lot of mandazis, so again, you don't really need a mixer for this yeah if you're preparing these for just yourself at home you can either use uh, some butter you can use some yogurt on but again they're not really necessary because if we go back to the proper roots of our mandazis yes all those other ingredients that people add on it and call it still mandazi 
it's not really necessary yes it's not ne really necessary mendozi was one of those meals or one of those um foods you can have for snack or you can have for breakfast and if you think of all those days when our parents were were young all these fancy things um like people like adding on to the mandazis were not there the mandazis were being prepared by our moms yeah ready for people to have breakfast instead of bread so all they need was a little bit of flour a little bit of sugar and a little bit of spices that they already have grind um in their their own um, pantries uh, those days and they will put that together and make a lovely dough ready to deep fry it and life goes on and some places they don't even bother putting any spices on it is just the flour and the sugar water mix that dough up and it is ready to go uh, Somebody is already asking me a question. I'm going to answer you guys. Uh, I've just read, somebody has just sent me a message, yeah? I am going to uh, respond to you guys after I finish, which is going to be maybe later today, uh, because after I prepared this, the person who's requested me, I have to take it to them. So after I finish doing all these meals, I'm going to take it to the person who's ordered them. And then I can come back have a quick shower and then i'll be able to reply to all those lovely messages that you guys have sent yeah if i've not responded to your message just bear with me i am going to do that if you've sent me an inbox or if you've sent me a worth message from directly on our whatsapp number don't worry i i i got you i'll answer you yes i am not ignoring you it's just because i'm a little bit overwhelmed but again that said I'm sure you've got a message respond telling you that I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So don't worry so much about it. I will get back to you. Okay, so back here. So we have our dough. Look at that. I always say when you're preparing dough, for you to know that your dough is ready, you look at your hands. Look at my hands. The amount of dough there is really minimal. On my palm, there's no dough completely. So that tells you that your dough is good to go. Don't over knead your dough. When you over knead your dough, it's not good. You're going to kill all the lovely air bubbles that we need there. So this is actually really done. Even if you look at the bowl, it almost looks like as if it's clean. So what we're going to do now with this lovely dough for our mandazi, we're going to put it on the side. Yeah? Put it on the side. You can actually cover it. I'll show you what you can use to cover it. We've got some baking paper here. You can use some baking paper. If you don't have baking paper, don't worry about it. You can just use a kitchen cotton cloth. That one can work too. We're going to make this a little bit damp. So you're going to scrunch it like that. Make it a little damp and then you cover that. The whole idea of you making it a little bit damp so that they, there's a bit of moisture going onto, um, onto your food because you don't want your mandozi to actually be dry when it is actually waiting to actually be prepared. So if you bear with me one second, I do that really quick. I need to wash my hands as well while I'm at it. So just bear with me guys one second. Okay, let me wet this now. Okay, so bring your dough back. We scratched it off and made it wet. And all you need to do is cover your dough. That's it. There you go. Put it on the side, room temperature, and it is good to go. We are going to, well, that is actually doing its thing there on the side, yeah? We're going to put away our sugar because we don't need our sugar anymore. Our plain our self-raising flour is going to go on the side. And uh-uh. Come this way, baby. Come this way. I'm gonna wipe my surface really quick because the next one we are going to do is chapati dough. So 
Chapati has also turned into be my Tyler's favorite as well. Yes, yeah, so many people like chapatis, which is good. So I'm going to do a chapati dough. Yes. So that's the next one on the line. So with chapati. I have my lukewarm water. Check. I have my plain flour. Check. I have salt and a little bit of sugar. It's that easy. <laughs> and as because I'm always preparing things like the way they used to prepare back home, have a gate what I'm using. I am using cowboy. This one is cowboy. This is a cooking fat that we use. It even has a picture of chapati. This is the cooking fat. I grew up knowing this. If you see cowboy coming off, yeah, cowboy cowing, yes, you know that chapatis are going to be cooked. You just start smiling. That time you tell your friends, I'm not coming out today. I am playing. Why are you not playing? Just know I'm not playing. I'm not going to tell you why, but just know I am not coming out to play because the whole idea was chapatis are sacred. Don't agree with me, agree with me, I don't care. Chapati is still sacred. Yes, we eat them any time of the day, but I was as I was growing up, yes, chapatis were those meals. You know the favorite meals that you have only when uh, there's a big occasion? That those are the days when we used to have chapatis. So when you have chapatis, I will tell you, I am not coming out today because we are having chapati. I can even tell you I've moved out. Why am I telling you I've moved out? Because that's how big deal chapati was. Yeah, chapati was a big deal. That day you listen to your mom, you do everything she asks, you don't argue with her. And you really, really compile with them, comply with everything that they ask you because chapati is cooking. And somehow those days when I was growing up, it used to take like the whole day for them to prepare chapati. It was on Sundays after, ch after church. After church, the process start and the house, the aroma that are going to come out of the house are just out of this world. Uh, it was chapati and either they will prepare chapati with the beans or they will prepare chapati with a stewed chicken or they will prepare it with the stewed beef but mainly it was chapati with green grums green grums are also a type of beans that um are very good for you actually i think i need to find out how i can get some green grums so that i can actually prepare it the way they used to prepare it for us i need to introduce that as well to scotch kitchen because that was like the main the main type of beans that we used to have uh with the uh, with the chapati so back here so you have my plain flour i have my cooking uh cooking fat yes it's a cooking fat so all I need I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of sugar yes we need a bit of sugar and I am also going to have a little bit of salt chapati it's so easy those people who put I don't know carrot guavas cabbage tomatoes name it on those things that you prepare and then you say it's chapati please let's not disgrace chapati chapati is so simple sugar salt flour a little bit of cooking fat that's it and oil and water make a dough make them round lovely looking things and you fry them that's it any other things chapati looking green purple orange that's not chapati that is not chapati even my grandmother will be turning on a grave and saying my lovely that's not chapati i don't know what that is but it ain't chapati so anyway, back here, let's mix this up together. So we mix that up together. So you can see here we have plain flour. We have a little bit of salt. We have a little bit of sugar. And you mix that dry, dry ingredient together. Make a lovely hole. Get your cooking fat, your cowboy. You know this company, Cowboy, yeah? When I started doing Scotch Kitchen, yes, cowboy, I'm going to shame you guys. 
uh, maybe it is not it's maybe those people who work with the marketing or uh, things like that I contacted them because I wanted to find a way where they can be able to supply me with this as often as possible because I use it a lot of time shock on me the email response first of all was uh, I don't know after how long three months that's when somebody responds to your email yeah just asking a basic question then after they answer they give you a contact number you call the number man those people are very rude customer service is not customer service then i asked myself why am i really bothering with these people because um they are clearly not bothered with their customers so what i tend to do now i just buy it independently and i make sure it arrives here and i use it and after i've melted it like that i put it away I put it away. Go and advertise your own way. Go and buy your own cowboy and put it there your own time. But I ain't going to advertise it for them. I ain't going to put it on my live video for long so that uh, they can actually get some credit off me. Because they were not nice people at all. But anyway, that is just by the way. That's end of my rant. So, when you're mixing your flour with your oil and uh, salt and sugar, with this you're going to have a little bit of lumps. So if you see, there are these lumps, and the lumps are just because you've actually added oil on uh, on your dry ingredients or on your flour. Ooh, this is when your ear, the middle of your head is going to be itching. Every part of your body that has not been itching, that's when it itches when you're about to do something like this. Anyway, add a little bit of water. I like bridges. I like making these volcanoes, yeah? Add a bit of water and just start mixing. This is almost exactly the same procedure as when you are actually doing your mandazi. When you're mixing, the more you mix, the more, the less uh, flour sticks to your hand. That's when you know that you're actually getting there, yeah? So let's mix this baby up. I think I'm going to add a little bit more water and I'm going to add a little bit more flour because I've just forgot that I have my chapati master here in this house and because also I need to take some of those chapatis to other people as well. So I think that should be enough. Yes, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, you've added a lot of flour but you didn't add any salt or any sugar on. I think it is enough whatever i added on should be enough okay let's go here so all you need to do mixing dough when you're mixing dough with you with your hands it's exactly the same as um how do you call that thing the mixer the mixer either goes clockwise or it goes anti-clockwise it doesn't go hmm, 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 hmm. because if you think about it if it goes this way and then it goes back it is undoing what it has done that's exactly the same thing you should learn when you're doing a dough and you decide to do it clockwise i'm going round clockwise or let's say if i decide i'm going anti-clockwise stick to that motion don't go this way turn it that way go that way you are removing you're adding bubbles and removing the bubbles so make up your mind do you want to go clockwise or anti-clockwise which side do you want to go yeah you choose one you can't have both ways just choose one. If you are going clockwise, stick to clockwise. Stick to clockwise throughout and you're going to have a lovely doll with just enough amount of those lovely bubbles, yeah? When you use um, lukewarm water or lukewarm to hot water, it goes because the hotter the water, the softer the doll. Yes? The hotter the water, the softer the dough. But you have to be fast in the mixing if you want to use super hot water. Yeah? So, as you can see there, my hands are about to get clean. My hands are about to get clean, which is good. So it tells me that my dough is almost done. As you can see, it doesn't take long. So if you are preparing maybe five or six chapatis or maybe ten, yeah, maybe five or six chapatis, it shouldn't really take you that long, really. 
you just need a little bit of patience. You need a little bit of um, smile, resilience, and enjoyment, and you will be done in no time. Again, don't overdo your dough. This is my hand again if you compare to the previous time when I started. And what I'm going to try and do again is make sure that, yes, this is perfect. We are sticking to one motion. So look at that. You see that? You see those lovely bubbles in there? That's what we, are, we want. You seeing that? You see how rough that is in here? Those are the lovely bubbles that we want on our manda, on our chapati. Yeah? So we're not going to need any more. What I'm currently doing, I am just making sure that it is nice and round like that. So the next thing I'm going to do, or you're supposed to do, you have your dough. You have your dough here, yeah, and you have your bowl. Put your mandazi dough right in the center of the bowl. Get your oil. Pour a little bit of oil on there, like that. Make sure that your mandazi or your chapati, chapati dough has all that oil inside. Yeah. make sure the oil is actually there this as well helps it helps with softening because we want to put this on the side and just let it do its thing so I'm washing my hands really really quick there and again with chapati just like mandazi you can use either a cloth or currently I am going to go ahead and use one of these. I'm sure this you can use a scissor to cut them or you can go the manual way like scotch and just cut it and do spray and hope that everything is going to cut like in a straight line get your lovely baking pepper and cover your dough this dough you can maximum for covering this dough and putting it in a um, room temperature place is three hours if you go more than three hours it's going to start becoming hard yeah three hours is the max we're not going to cover it for three hours because we're going to start cooking anytime soon. So I'm going to clean that surface and we're going to check on our, we're going to check on our, what are we checking on first? Our beans, because our beans are done. Let's check on our beans first. Let me put this aside. The time is actually going so fast it's already two o'clock we don't need this let's check on our beans then after checking on our beans we check on our chicken reduce the heat actually i'm going to check on my beans and then we're going to go on the wings and then we're going to do some motor motor on the wings yes then we'll do mandazis so Let's get back here to our beans. You remember this? Look how lovely that is. Look at that. Look how rich that is. Yeah? Oopsie daisy. I just lost a little bit of my sauce, but that's okay. I hope you're able to see that. So that's kidney beans on... That's kidney beans onions spicy up garlic and ginger mm. it's really nice it's so nice 
but I need to leave it to cook for a few more minutes. I want to leave it there to cook for a few minutes in very low heat. Before I do that, let me do this because this is bothering me here. One second, guys. Welcome to Scotch Kitchen where the little things bothers her. I have to wipe here before I continue cooking the beans. If I don't wipe it, I won't stay in peace. Give me one second, guys. It's just something with me and uh, things that spill, yeah? It's a me disease. This is not everybody's disease. It's just a me disease. It's just a me thing. So, again, this is just not a must. You can do this after. I tend to do it in the middle as I go. Because I feel it has to be clean for me to be able to cook. I don't know why, but I just feel that is the right way. Okay, so. That said, now let's go back to our wings. I need to show you guys. Now, let me get another, a little, ah. I can use this. No, I don't want to use this. I just want a small pan. And I have to remove my chicken so that I can show you guys what happens when I'm actually preparing the motomoto. The chicken is actually done. It's actually started burning, as you can see. But it's really nice and golden. So, when I want to prepare, when I want to do the motomoto, you know some people like their, their chicken wings a little bit hotter than, um, than what I've actually spiced up. Some people like it hot. I get a little bit of olive oil. A little bit of, a little. I mean, a little, super little. And then what I tend to do, Get a spoon and get my motomoto chili sauce. Need to turn that down. And I'm going to go with two. <laughs> two teaspoons. So what I'm doing currently, I am getting some of those chicken wings. Woo! One second, guys. Ah, it's gone. I wanted to sneeze really loudly. So, I put my chicken wings there. And I glaze them really quick with some water butter. Phew! I glaze them with some motomoto yeah it is that hot and that's it <coughs> Woo! as you can let me let me put them in a, in a in a bowl for you guys to be able to see how they look like i'll wash the bowl So I have to put these ones separately. They cannot go together with that. So those are, those are scotch motomoto. You know when I advertise a scotch motomoto chicken wings? Those are scotch motomoto chicken wings. Yes, they're very hot. And that is why I am dribbling. So what I'm going to do, I am turning that off. This is going back in the oven, at the bottom of the oven. Turning that, closing that off because that is done. 
Yes. So we've actually prepared our wings. Let me get my list. <coughs> Woo, that is hot. So we've done our grilled chicken. We've done our wings. We've prepared our mandazi and we've prepared our chapati. We still have a lot to go. Oh, we've prepared our veggie table, our kidney beans. Yeah? So now what I'm going to do, this is the list I have to go through. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to prepare my mandazi. <coughs> my baking thing is up there. It is up, 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 up there, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go up my cabin's life. That's a bit of a mean way to show you guys things. So, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do that after I finish my life with you guys. Or, I'm going to turn you guys around and then I get my thing. So, my beans are cooking. I was just bringing my chicken for you guys to be able to see. It's not going on yet. I'm going to prepare my chicken after I've actually done my mandazi. So as you can see, it is seasoning amazingly. So what I'm going to only add here, I'm just going to add my onions. I'm going to add my tomatoes. And then I'm going to let this cook really slow, in very slow heat. Then I am going to add uh, my tomato paste. Then, pardon me, bell peppers. And then some coriander. And then that's it with the chicken. That is how I prepare my chicken. So, if you just bear with me one second. <clears throat> Let me get somebody. Sign up. Come, please. I need you, like, right away. Let me get, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Let me get Tyler to help me out with the getting the getting the frying thing. But I'm going to move you guys out. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to climb. You know at the top there? The fridge? Mm, uh, not the fridge. On top of this side. Mm -hmm. You have to climb here. Well, I can't uh, you're not spider -Man. I'm live, man. Okay. I don't feel like showing my people how I'm a Spider-Man. <clears throat> not yet, but I have to move Why a few things <clears throat> because I've done motor motor and it's now almost shocking me. Like I have to turn the, you have to get the soup. I'm going to turn the video so that people don't see you doing what uh, your gymnastics up there. So guys, one second, Tyler. No, We're going to turn all of you around. Okay, Tyler. The wet is floor. So you see, guys, that's my kidney beans. Cooking, which I think I need to turn the, the cooker off because it is actually sticking. What do I get? Uh, the, the pan. The on this other side. Yeah, that one. The round one. This one? Yeah. Yeah, that one. He put it down there. So you can see my kidney beans, they are definitely done. Tell her, get down then. My kidney beans are definitely done, as you can see. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you. They are definitely done. And what I'm going to do now... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> we brought it down. Yes. We brought it down. Yeah, there's some things you're not supposed to show people online. Yeah, you don't. You need not to give them something to talk about. My kidney beans are done. <clears throat> I know you guys know that we are Spider Man and Spider Woman, but I don't have to show you how we actually do our exercise and turn into Spider Man and Spider Woman, isn't it? So, anyway, so our pan is here. That's the pan that was up there. So let's prepare our mandazi. Let's prepare our mandazi. <coughs> Cooking oil, vegetable oil. Dip it in there. 
Oh, I need to also to do my samosas. I'm going to do that later. So, because I want to show you guys this, then uh, we can at least end the video in a very high note where you've seen us making wet fries. We've actually made the kidney beans. You've seen how I actually prepared the scotch motomoto towards the end. You've seen how to prepare mandazi dough. You've seen how to prepare chapati dough. What else have we prepared? The last time I show you guys how you can actually season your chicken and the spices that you need to season your chicken. If you've not seen that, go back on our videos a few weeks back. We've actually done that. So you've actually seen some steps of preparing this. We've done a few videos of actually how to prepare our salad using our spices. And we're going to continue doing more videos. So you need your oil here for mandazi. You need to, I'm using vegetable oil as you've seen there. And then, oh, Jesus, which one is which? I put them side by side. So I was wondering which one is which. Okay, so. Our mandazi. Okay, I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the heat there for a second. Then I show you guys. Oh, it is hot. I remember I'm, I'm a superwoman. I wanted to just hold it like that. Okay, so. When the oil is actually oiling there. When the oil is. When the oil is becoming hot there. Mandazi. So remove your mandazi dough out of your um, your corner that you actually prepared it. And now what you need to do, what you need to do, oh Jesus, what you need to do is you're going to put it on your surface. Make sure that your surface is clean. And it is actually good to go. Make sure that you have a clean surface. Yeah. You're going to sprinkle a little bit of your self-raising flour on your surface. I hope you're able to see this. Yeah, you're able to see that a little, right? Let's move you there like this. But again, my pan is blocking you guys. But you will be able to see at that corner. Just that corner here, right here. That's all you never, you are going to be able to see. So don't worry about it. Yeah, get your mandazi dough and knead it just a little, not too much. You're just making it a way so that you can have a really nice round, <laughs> round figure. Sorry guys, you have not been me. I don't be me buttering my mandazi flour, yeah? I tend to put a little bit flour on my rolling pin. And you want to roll. We're going to roll. Don't roll it too thick and don't roll it too thin. You just need it right, yeah? Not too thin and not too thick. Oh, I like these um, mandazis because these ones have a bit of an age, yeah? Then, after you've done that, I always use a knife to get them to have the same shape. I use a knife and I just cut them, cut the knife along and along again. Yeah, you're able to see that. And that way. And then... After cutting it that way, now that's when I cut them in shapes. So this is the shapes that we have. Nice and easy. There you go. Nice and easy. It depends if you're a foodie or not. But again, nice and easy. If you find the ones that are really big and chubby, you can reduce them. So these are the sizes of our mandazi that we have today. So what I'm going to do, I'm bringing back the heat here and we're going to really fry them really, really nice and quick. You need your bowl and you need your paper towel. You need your bowl and you need your paper towel. 
and you need this. <laughs> we'll bring it. You need that. <laughs> We're bringing in them together. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm laughing because um, <laughs> you know when you're doing something, yeah. And you forgot in the name of it. I could not remember the name of this. This thing here. The cooking stick, yeah? Okay, so how do you measure your oil? You can use a probing thermometer to see the temperature of your oil. If it is ready to go. Or you can use... I wonder what happened to my small cooking stick. I don't know if Tyler decided to play with it and then he just decided, okay, I'll keep it for good. You get one of this wooden stick, put it right in the middle. When you see bubbles coming out of your oil, your oil is good to go. Yes, that is um, mama's way of finding out if your cooking oil is spot on. Get your mandazi. This is also another way. If you put this mandazi and bubbles are bubbling around it, it is good to go. Yeah, and that's what exactly is happening here. Bubbles are bubbling. We're going to go straight and I'm going to continue adding them. You can add them manually the way I am doing. Don't throw the mandazis in the oil. The oil is going to splash back at you and that's going to be another disaster. You're going to get burnt. Don't throw them in there. Yes? Just take your time and slide them in or just place them in. Just be very careful. If you're scared, put them on this surface and just lay them in there. They're going to detach themselves off this spoon nice and safe. And also you are going to be safe. When the mandozi start cooking, you will realize they will start floating. When they start floating, that means they are cooking really nice and well. Because we've used self-raising flour, self-raising as its name goes, it self-raises, so that's why you're getting that effect. You can use a little bit of baking powder on your mandazis. If you're using plain flour, you don't have any self-raising flour, you can use plain flour and then you can add any raising agent, which is baking powder, baking soda, or um, yeah, I think those ones, these not it? Or any other uh, raising agent that you know you can use it to actually help you do the, that process some people use self raising and they still use some other baking agents so when your mandozi starts rising you need to start turning them yeah you guys want to come closer and see I'm gonna bring you guys closer let me bring you guys closer. So close. Sorry, Facebook. Let me bring you closer. There you go. And you guys too. I know, I know. We're going to do it. There you go. So, I think it's this other way around like this. And this. As you can see. Can you see? Yeah, there. Perfect. <laughs> this is called multitasking at the next generation. As you can see there, our mandozis are actually cooking so well. And we don't want them to cook for too long. When you start seeing that they're becoming too dark, when you're starting to see that they're becoming too dark, that's the time for you to say, okay, my friends, it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to come out. Okay? So, it's time for them to come out. As you can see there. Yeah? Hope you're able to see that. And they go inside there. Let's get the others. Guys, this is like multitasking in like a different level. I am holding both you guys together with my hand. One hand. Turning with the other one. You see? You place them. That's all you do. You place them in there. You don't throw them. That's what I was trying to explain to you guys. You just place them in there. I don't know if we can put all of them. Yeah, let's just go on and put all of them. 